Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can securely register users for your web app over SSL. Specifically, we'll send the username and password over a SSL connection, and then we'll store the password hash in the database. I'll also show you how to create a self-signed certificate for testing and how to configure Vapor to use it. One quick note, if you've been following along with some of the previous screencasts, be sure to drop all your database tables before continuing for this one, because I made a few minor changes to the database structure for the screencast. So you wanna make sure you're starting with a fresh state. Let's dive in. I have a simple web app here that has a user model object, but so far there's no way to register new users. Let's fix that. First, import turnstile and turnstile crypto. Turnstile is the security framework for Vapor. We'll talk more about it in the next screencast, but for now, all we need is its hashing function. Next, I'm going to change the type of the password from validated plain text password to a plain string that will store the password hash. Basically, I don't want to store the raw password in the database anymore. That's a really bad security practice. Instead, I want to store a hash of the password. That way, anyone casually browsing the database won't see the user's passwords. Note that a hash of the password still isn't perfect as you can brute force guess passwords, but it's still a lot better than plain text passwords. Now that we're storing a hash of the passwords, we need to update the initializer. I'll rename password to raw password to make it clear, and then I'll validate the raw password. Finally, inside self.password, I'll store a hash of the validated password using turnstile crypto's bcrypt functionality. In the second initializer, I will set the password to the string pulled from the node. Finally, in make node, I can just update this to password since we aren't using a validated type anymore. Now that we have an updated password field, let's write our method to register a user. We need a name, email, password, and we'll create a new user based on that. We'll then run a check to see if there's already a user with that email address. If not, we'll save the user and return it. But if there is a, already a user with that email, then we'll throw an error. Now that we have the model able to register new users, we now have to create a new user interface for this by updating the view and the view controller. Let's start with the view. I need to create a new web page to let the users register. So I'll create a new file called register.leaf and regenerate the Xcode project. I'll open register.leaf I'll extend the base template and export a new body. I'll create a row that is full width. Inside, I'll put a form that posts to slash TAL slash register and add a label and input for the email, password, and full name of the user. I'll also add a register button and close out the form. Finally, I'll create a link in case the user has already logged in that goes to slash TIL slash login. We won't be making the login in this screencast, but this gets us ready for the next one. Finally, I'll open tilcontroller.swift and make a method that will be called to display the register view. It simply calls drop.view.make, passing in register, which is the name of the leaf template that we just created. I'll also write another method that will handle the post to the form at til slash register. It will look for the email, password, and name that the form is supposed to send, and bail if anything is missing. Next, it will call the register helper method that we wrote earlier on TIL user discarding the result. For now, it will redirect to slash users so we can hopefully see the new user in the database. Of course, for this to work, I need to register the routes. The first will be a get to slash TIL slash register to display the view. The second will be a post to slash TIL slash register to register the new user. At this point, we could try it out and it would work, but I really don't want to show it to you as sending raw usernames and passwords over an unencrypted HTTP connection is a terrible idea. So let's take a quick detour and see how we can set up Vapor to communicate over HTTPS instead. The first thing I need to do is create a certificate. To do this, I'll open Keychain Access and go to Cert Assistant, Create a Certificate. I'll click Create and Continue. Now let's find the certificate I just created. An easy way to do this is to search for localhost and look for the one with today's date and a gold certificate. I'll double click my new certificate and I'll make sure that trust is expanded. I'll set the SSL to always trust so that my browser is happy with the certificate. It will ask me for my password, which I'll enter. Next, I'll right click the private key and I'll click Export 
and I'll save this as certificates.p12 inside the slash config slash secrets slash search directory. I'll click OK to skip entering a password for this, and I'll click Allow. At this point, I've made a certificate and a private key in the P12 format, but Vapor wants it in the PEM format. To do this, I'll open up a terminal and I'll switch to the config secret search directory. And I'll use OpenSSL to convert the PKCS12 file from P12 format to PEM format. I'll use the dash nodes option to disable encrypting the private key. Next, I'll open certificates.pem and take a look. Note that this file has two parts, the certificate and the private key. Vapor wants these in two separate files, so I'm going to create two files here, one called server cert.pem and one called server key.pem, and I'm pasting in the corresponding part into each of these files. Okay, now that I have my certificate and private key, I just need to configure Vapor to use it. To do this, I'll open servers.json. This is the file that configures what port Vapor is listening on and if it's using transport layer security. I'll delete the entry here and start a new one. Basically, I'll listen on port 4343 on localhost, and I'll set the security layer to TLS. There are different ways you can configure the TLS option here, but I'll choose files and then list the certificate file and the private key file that I generated. I'll also note that the certificate is self-signed. Finally, I can build and run and navigate over HTTPS on localhost port 4343 to slash TIL register. Note that it appears okay and I see the lock icon that indicates that the connection is secure. Now I can enter in the info for a new user and click register. Nice, I see my new user is now in the database and rather than storing the raw password, it's hashed. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to register users for your web app over HTTPS. Now that we can register users, the obvious next step is to let them log in. And that's the focus of the next screencast. Speaking of registration, this reminds me of the one time that there was this programmer working on an app for a cash register. He tried it out on a gallon of milk and it worked fine. But then he tried it on a carton of cigarettes and it failed. After a lot of debugging, he discovered the cause. It was a syntax error. All right, I'm out.